in the G7. So they have this bilateral meeting. We were very close to making a deal with Canada on NAFTA, bilaterally perhaps, and then we leave and Trudeau pulls this sophomoric political stump for domestic consumption. What? Back with me, Elise Jordan and Mark Thompson. Mark. That's your friend. Larry, L Larry Kudlow or, or, a, or a very conservative audience might not get to see what Justin Trudeau said. So Larry Kudlow calling Justin Trudeau saying it was a sophomoric attack, calling him a backstabber. Let's listen to what Canadian PM Trudeau actually said. It's kind of insulting. Canadians, we're polite, we're reasonable, but we also will not be pushed around. That's a stab in the back? <laughs> no. No, absolutely not. Again, let's go back to the Obama obsession. Um, Justin Trudeau came to be known as the Canadian Obama. So he has him right there in the flesh to target and fight with. This is insane. And what's even more insane about it... If but we, it's if perfect for an American who didn't follow things word for word this weekend or who doesn't see what Trudeau says. It's perfect for that American oh, yeah. who goes, right on, Trudeau stabs us in the back, you get him. Except he didn't. And it's also perfect for, again, that self-victimization game that Trump likes to play with his base. I'm set apart. I'm different from everybody. The world is against us. Again. Canada? <laughs> but, look, it doesn't matter. It's all of them. It's, the, it's Canada. It's all of the allies we've ever had. Again, history, Nixon shock, Bretton Woods, same thing. Um, but go, if we go back to that picture, there's something I think we may be missing. If you look at that picture. Pull that picture back up. Um, Look carefully. Only two mouths seem to be open and moving. The president of France, Macron, and John Bolton. Trump isn't talking. His arms are folded. That's really scary. John Bolton is speaking, standing over his shoulders, speaking to our allies on behalf of the United States. And we know what kind of person John Bolton is. He wouldn't mind um, uh, ostracizing us from everybody in, in the world and creating some type of conflict. That, to me, is the scariest part. And That's a hard picture. President Trump told Emmanuel Macron in their last White House visit that the EU was, has been worse to the United States than China. <laughs> if President Trump truly understood trade and business, he would absolutely know that's false. And China has been attacking us economically, but the EU hasn't. And I, I, I want to not just share Larry Kudlow, but what Peter Navarro, who, who Jared Kushner found while on the campaign trail in an Amazon search. President Trump would share his views of the world, and then Jared would have to scramble and say, is there an economist on planet Earth who could mimic this? And the only guy he found was Navarro. And this is what Navarro had to say about Justin Trudeau. There's a, a special place in hell for any foreign leader that engages in bad faith diplomacy with President Donald J. Trump and then tries to stab him in the back on the way out the door. And that's what bad faith Justin Trudeau did with that stunt press conference. That's what weak, dishonest Justin Trudeau did. And that comes right from Air Force One. A special place in hell. That line is from Madeleine Albright. Had President Trump not been late to the gender meeting at the G7, he may have known that. Your reaction? They want to pick a fight. That's all. The, that's what this is about. And this With is our the friendly MO. Neighbor? This is well. I can't help but to compare it to you know. I have a little corgi, and he is a little rascal, and he can be bad sometimes. And I have a friend with a sweet golden retriever. This is like my bad corgi just trying to pick on a golden retriever, which actually could fight back. If they want to fight back, and there's no point in doing this. Okay. I just look at what happened with World War II and Dwight Eisenhower and how he labored so under such difficulty to bring together all of these nations to fight and to actually win World War II at, at a time when America wasn't that into uh, these kind of alliances. And then look at, and look at what the past 50, 60, 70 years has brought us, a relative time of peace and prosperity, and we're, these nations are our best friends. And it seems like they're just hell-bent on destroying that. Ian Bremmer said if President Trump uh, considers the relationship a 10, is, he, is it a 1 to 100 scale? 1 being the worst, 100 being the best. And Max Boot wrote this, and this is what has me concerned. He wrote this for the Washington Post. I can't stop thinking about this interview unless I'm missing something. These are the most hostile comments any U.S. official has made about any U.S. ally ever. 
This is tougher than the way U.S. presidents talk about leaders like Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad before right. we bomb them. The president is going after democratic leaders, not autocratic right. dictators. Right. And who's you, about to sit down with nice guy Kim Jong-un. Yet, and yet he feels as if he deserves a Nobel Prize. Um, you know, there used to be a segment on Sesame Street called Opposite Day, and I think that's what our very amateur president is doing. Let's not forget, he went there and said we need to let Russia back in to the G7 to make it G8. Stephanie, um, and no one asked him about that. No one asked him about Russia. He voluntarily brought right, that on up. his own, just out of the clear blue. Stephanie, you are not colluding with MSNBC. You work for MSNBC. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. He works for Putin. And instead of looking for collusion, we need to look for a W-2. Oh! <laughs> you think they're paying taxes in this relationship? Yeah, no, yeah, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah well, that's no. Not doing <laughs> wow, we're going to leave this uh, segment there then. <laughs> Up next, Robert De Niro. He curses out President Trump to a standing...